much. And uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Sangyo for inviting me. This is actually the first time for me to visit Korea. And it's, uh, Japan and Korea is so close, but it's somehow surprising that I never visited Korea. Uh, I hope that everybody probably, everybody visiting, have everybody visit Japan or not? Probably not, right? It's so close, and you should. Like, uh, probably not a good time right now because Japanese, yeah, it's, it's not strong, but uh, but probably a few years from now, may, maybe the Korean won't gonna be strong, and it's gonna be much cheaper. So I hope everybody can <laughs> come to, and also feel free to ask me because I can do something. Um, today, so the Thursday, right? It's more like uh, algorithmic talk. Well, actually, not algorithm. Just also the graph theory, also algorithm. And today, it's more connected to graph theory because I think that both all of the probably people know graph theory at least the graduate level. I thought. <laughs> well, feel free to ask me if you have some question. And sometimes I made a mistake in the slide, so so you should. Keep you should ask me if some, something doesn't make sense. Now, I, today I'd like to talk about uh, graphs with a subdivision. But let me just begin with what the subdivision is. The subdivision, so it's, everybody knows minor or not? If not, I'm going to define a minor operation. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, so that, Minor operation means that is it good enough? Should I make it bigger? Can you see that? Okay. It meaning the following three. One, it's actually easy. Delete the vertex. Two, delete the edge. And three, that's called contraction, contract edge. Um, the sub, so the reason why I'm go telling you that minor operation is because it's cro closely related to the subdivision. So it really makes sense to know what the minor is. The minor means the following. If I say that H is a minor of G, if H can be obtained from G by applying this three operation. In fact, so I should write uh, what the contraction means. Suppose you have an H like this. Then the contracting edges means just identify these two guys into single vertex, like this. Is it okay? Just, just to identify these two guys into. You have two edges on the right, and now. Yeah. So this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. The H is a minor of G if H can be obtained from G by the minor operation. Delete the vertex, contracting edges, and deleting edges. The subdivision is quite similar, except that the contraction doesn't appear here. Basically, the subdivision means the following. For convenience, I just give you a K4 here. It's, a, it's called K4. For it's a complete graph with four vertices. And subdivision means that for each of the edges, so in the definition, G, uh, 
g correspond this k4 and h corresponds the following you it says the subdividing meaning that if you see the edges then you just put the vertices here and you can do what whatever you want so oh no, so you can do how many titles you want That's a subdivision. Okay. Now the reason for why these two concepts are quite important is the following theorem. You probably know the Kratowski theorem. That's probably the most famous theorem in the graph theory. Graph G is a planar if and only if. G has no K5, no K33 as here's a some fun point. Um, the original theorem is actually this subdivision. But it turns out that it's same as some minor. You can replace that this is a minor. The K5 is, uh, this is K5, K5, you probably know what is K5, right? That's K5, and K3 is 3. Now I should mention that if the graph contains a subdivision, then that also contains a minor. Because if you see this, you just need to contract all edges. Then you get K4. So the Kratowski theorem says as a minor in the original form. The minor is actually, uh, sorry, the subdivision. And later, it is proved that subdivision can be replaced by binary. This conclusion is minor is weaker. So the theorem is actually stronger. Um, the point here is that you might expect that if you know the variable about the minor, then you might think that this minor and subdivision are very close. But it's not. That's that is main talk of my main, main topic of my talk. It's completely different. It's it's it destroys almost everything. Well, it's yeah, almost everything, unfortunately. Now, let me show another example that you might be you might see the difference between the minor and the subdivision. In the graph, so if you look at the minor version of the this Kratowski theorem, it says that if the graph doesn't contain K5 here or K3 as a minor, then the graph is planar. And it turns out that if you if you just exclude K5, it's almost planar, except for a little bit small things happen. So let me just uh, give you the result that it's called Wagner theorem. Graph has no K5 right now. So I'm going to exclude not only K5, so the planar result you actually exclude both K5 and K33. But if you exclude one of them, what happens is the following. So if G can be obtained 
from paragraph. And it's called V8. Uh, let me just show what to create. It's it's kind of the nice H cycle. And you just uh, is that right? Let's really go this way. Just join the vertices between the diagonal side by three sums. Well, this term is somehow technical term, but I'm not going to define that. But just just remember that there is a nice characterization. K5. If you exclude the K5 minor, then uh, yes, if and actually if and only if. Thank you. And uh, so, if you take the graph, so the graph theory course, I think you, you everybody probably knows this one, probably. And uh, even probably. In the distance, the graph theory book disappears. But I'm not, even you don't know what this means, just, just ignore it. But just, just know that this is basically the nice characterization. And uh, we can figure out what kind of graph that is no K5 minor. Does it make sense? Yes. Do you have some questions? I can, I can stop that. But I like to give one corollary from this theorem. The only thing I want to say is that the only here, because this makes uh, uh, the only thing that you should probably remember is only this one. Here, I'm, I'm not uh, assuming that connectivity or whatever, whatever for the graph, G. But if you assume the graph is full connected, do you know the connectivity? Everybody knows the connectivity? Okay, so then if G is full connected, and has no K5 minor, then it's going to be planar. Then it is planar. That's somehow the clean statement, right? So, um, I'm not explaining, I was not explaining this part because I just need this one. It's kind of a clean statement. If you need, if you assume something like connectivity, then this part's is gone. And uh, in fact, this is just a corollary because if you look at this graph, everybody has these reasons. It won't be this. That's a nice result, but unfortunately, if you replace this one by the K5 subdivision, almost nothing is wrong. Almost nothing is wrong. So the only thing it's known is the following. This is theorem by Mada, 1998. Now I think that I should stress full conjecture that because this is conjecture by Dirac in 1964. This was 35 years of old conjecture. And what's, so what he proved is the following. 3n minus 5 edges. Um, n means the number of vertices. Is it okay? I'm using n as the number of vertices always. Force to force a k5 subdivision. This 
this is really big result in this area. And you see, the 3n minus 5h is somehow important because that's actually true for the minor case as well. So if you replace subdivision by minor, that's, this is still true. And if the minor case, it's easy actually. You can really improve by uh, induction very easily. Well, it's not, um, it's not trivial, but it's not like a paper. It's just an exercise, I should say. <laughs> well, the 3n minus 5 is somehow important because if you relax to 1, it's going to be 3n minus 6 edges, which can be planar. This means that, that g can be planar. Um, um, it, everybody knows that for three and minus how three and minus six comes from. It's it, the Euler formula. Is it okay? So the three and minus six is somehow important. And then once you add the one edges, you get uh, not only k five minor but also the k five subdivision. And this is actually big result. That's thirty five years open for thirty five years. And uh, the minor version that was proved by Dirac the actually same year, 1964. Now, how about, uh, so for the minor case, we know this clean statement. If G is full connected, then G is, uh, the, and G is full connected, and the no, no K5 minor, then G is planar. We have such a nice statement. <coughs> well, um, here's some funny graph. How about K44? That's uh, not my. You might not. I might be confused because this is, picture is not good. But. The, the graph is, you have four vertices here, and you have four vertices here, and they join everything. So that's a bipartite graph. Can you find the K5 minor? First of all, my question. Can you find the K5 minor? Well, if you believe this sum, it's yes, because uh, it's four connected. So let me just give you a hint. You probably contract this edge, this edge, this edge. <laughs> then what happened? Yes. So I'm saying that can you find it? <laughs> it exists, right? It exists, yes. <laughs> yes. So it, yes, it exists. Just contract that. Contract the these three edges. But the next question is, can you find the K5 subdivision? Well, I was asking for this because because this is no, <laughs> yeah, because this is no. So that gives a counter example. And also, you can actually extend a little bit more. Um, not only this graph, but also the bigger four connected graph. So unfortunately, this graph is non-planar and four connected, but doesn't contain K5 subdivision. And there are a lot more, actually. So this kind of clean statement is false, unfortunately. But actually, 
there is another hope that by Paul Seymour, he came here in the summer. Seymour has a conjecture that that the this kind of a clean statement holds if we replace by f four by five. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I have a small theorem, but like, okay. <laughs> Conjecture that. Yeah, so if G is 5 corrected, so I'm going to write uh, this way, and uh, non planar. Then she has a K5 subdivision. And this is uh, open for many years, and uh, still open. And again, this graph and uh, some other graph shows you that this. Four is not enough, and there's some implication that if this is true, that implies this. Minus big result. So, so what I'm showing you the example uh, the, the here is that basically, if, if you like to work on the K5 minor, unfortunately everything's known. But if you want to work on the K5 subdivision, unfortunately, everything is hard. And this, this is actually a really hard problem, I think, unfortunately. And this is a really hard proof. It's not so easy. To so that's kind of things I'm interested in. The, so what I want to focus on is the difference between the minor and uh, subdivision. The huge difference, as you see here. And still, it gives you a lot more difference if you go further. It's, it's only K5 case, but if you go more generic to KT case, then that makes more difference. And also, the people interested in area is because there is a big open conjecture called Hayash conjecture. The Hadovich. Actually, this conjecture is false, unfortunately. I'm, I'm telling you what it is. That's somehow the interest in this area. Also, that in the graph minor, you, you may probably know that there is a nice bit of the ordering theorem. That's called graph minor. Theorem. But unfortunately, that's not true for the subdivision. Then, I'm, the last thing I want to talk is uh, some structure I can get. It's not so really big result, unfortunately. Now, the, let me just so so far we have only looked at K five case. Now I'm going to look at K T. The general T, fixed T, okay. Now the first thing I like to look at is the density and the connective condition. Density means that what's the, the what's the minimum degree condition that falls through the KT minor or KT subdivision. That's somehow the general and the most natural step to work on such a things. And for the minor case, the first one is a minor one. Just because I've got this one, I should use that. That was by, done by Kostashko Thomas in 1984, 82 or something, 25, more than 25 years ago. That they showed that basically if the graph has, everybody knows the minimum degree, I think, right? Minimum degree, at least this many, so the, this is all the d square root, so that's funny banger, d times square root log t, then such a graph must contain k t minor. Okay, and this is actually best possible. But actually, best possible it's not. Well, I'm not. I'm not saying that this is not best possible. It's the best possible, but I can. I can keep it more. There are some recent results that is, uh, we can beat this one. Uh, namely, we assume that the graph is large graph. Uh, the next slide I'll show you what it is. Uh, how about the uh, subdivision case? Then this was done by Borbash and Thomason and Kovnas to Samaredi, mm -hmm. 
old to the big guys, and then I think it's uh, actually the 98 or something. They show that the correct order is a T square. Okay, so this always already makes a difference, right? In the minor case, you really need T square root T. In the subdivision case, you really need the, the, the quadratic. And uh, m maybe you might point out that for the for the K five case, it's the same, but that's just coincidence because it's really small. And uh, this is really best possible. Uh, meaning that you can construct large graph as well. Okay, now uh, let me just mention the why I'm actually stick to the large graph. That is because I can say something more. Here's something. So a couple of years ago, uh, these four, four teams, four guys in the team proved that, well, remember that in the previous slide, I just pointed out that uh, basically if you, if you need to make a graph so that they contain the KT minor, you really need T times square root T connectivity. But I'm going to give you a contradiction, contradiction because we proved that, well, no, actually, if you assume that linear connectivity is enough, provided that graph is big enough. How big is It's kind of a it's huge. It's really huge. I, it's kind of the, the function. So number of tab also depends on t. It's kind of really huge. So in the minor case, actually, the, lo the noise so, sorry. The reason why I'm saying that this order t square log t is best possible is because there's an example that you really need this. But it turns out this example is very small. So once you beat the number of the, that small graph, it's going to be better. You get, you can make this from the linear order. In fact, two t, even more actually, actually. So that's, that's somehow you can do better, even not only the t square of t, but almost linear. And in fact, you can do more. This guy has actually proved that the same condition actually implies that if you give another s here, the idea you get actually s dissident minus. Not only one, but also many. You get many, or, or subdivision of KST. That's kind of things it's necessary, because the graph itself is by complete by part that is unbalanced, and that's nearly necessary. So that's this is some, somehow the graph coming from the. You have the. Let's see. Something like two T vertices, and all everybody else is here, and that just everybody. So the bipartite graph is one part that says the two D vertices and the other part says everything. Then this graph cannot contain. Oops, oops, sorry. This graph con doesn't contain S division KT by now, unfortunately, but we can say that this graph contains subdivision KST at the cell. Okay, so what I want to say is that let's let's come back here. In fact, not only T square of T, but also linear connectivity force, force to have a KT minor. But unfortunately, the subdivision case, that's not true. Even, even we can construct a graph which is large, also connectivity is T square, but doesn't contain KT subdivision. So we can we cannot improve the connectivity order, the order of the magnitude t, t, t square. But what we can do, so that this is the first reason I'm going to talk about. That is here. 
Unfortunately, we cannot say anything about uh, the improvement of connectivity, but the same connectivity condition that force uh, only one subdivision also force many. Not only one, but also many. So we get out of a subdivision. That's one reason I have right now. That's new reason. So this is a good point to stop to for the question. Do you have any question right now? Can you say something about the structure of the second case? Uh, for instance, induced as a induced subgraph or just no, no. Or like uh, what I think that no, I th unfortunately we only get this subdivision. You may have a further edges. Yes. So intuitively, one case we get this is that we have a small separation, something like a t, some t square or something, but the number of component here is big, much bigger than t square. Mm -hmm. In this case, you know, if you take a Mengel theorem, everybody sends the t square passes, then you get this. If the number of components is much bigger than the, the S on T, S times T. So that's kind of the graph of this, right? If you delete this one, then you get a row of components. Okay, can I go ahead? In the theorem of to construct a prime Thomason, yes. um, you wrote you wrote minimum degree and uh yes this one or connectivity. Yes. And these two are uh, these two are equivalent or they prove they, I think that they actually s s prove the only the minimum degree condition because that's the implied connectivity, right? But they show the example which is connectivity with this one. So it's not really good to say that, oh, actually, this is something like a theta or whatever, I think. Yes. This one? Yeah, the one you wrote there, 10 to 10. Oh, oh, this one, no? no, this one is uh, that one. Uh, this one. And if you have the S, it's going to be basically here. The tower also depends on the S and T. So it's not very countable. This guy? This guy? This, to the left. this one. That's also the same anti right? When, where did, where did, when you drew this figure, what were you explaining? This one. This one. This one explaining that uh, the one. The one that was the N of ST. N of S. Yes. Right? But, but I think that unfortunately. So this is much smaller than that. So this is a regularity lemma or something? No, no. We don't use uh, any similarity type theorem, kind of the more like a robust and similar structure. Yeah, so that's an example of when we get the second one. And just, just you know, pigeonhole principle and get the Anything else? 
Okay, let me just keep going. Keep going. So, second thing I like to talk about is that when, so that's kind of, that the first part we focus on the density and the connectivity condition. But I think it's really important to assume something, connectivity. Now let me show why, let me show why I think that this is important. That's kind of a couple of slides here. The first of all, I'd like to show you that web causal ring for minus. So everybody, does, do, you, do you know the graph minus theorem? The, just the theorem. You don't really have to know the whole structure. Just actually, OK, so then let me just give you the theorem itself. For every infinite sequence, so I will give you a graph that's an infinite sequence, then there is a true guy so that one guy is a minor of the other. That's kind of, that's a deep theorem, and uh, it's it's not you know this kind of things are not so easy to prove. Well, this is a really hard problem. Now let me show you that this kind of nice theorem is no longer true if we replace the minor here by the subdivision. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> All right. Okay. If anyone has a question, I can talk it later. Good. Good. So, so everybody is supposed to work on this. <laughs> okay. So. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but let me just give you a hint. <laughs> there is a small separation, actually two separation. The simplest example has a two separation. Okay. I'm not sure that helps, but <laughs> I'm not sure that helps. Maybe helps. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> two, two separation. So that's kind of thing I really want to say here. OK. Two separation. So if you look at, if you work on this, um, the, somehow the easiest example is that there's two separation. Also, somehow small separation. What? What do you mean? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> But do you, so two set cuts. Uh, so, so yeah. Okay. So that's so that's a good hint. <laughs> the second example I'm going to tell you is so that, that that's the first thing I was I wanted to talk. That means that that makes a big difference between the minor relation and the subdivision rate. And that the, the bottom line is that, that as far as I know, that all some, the count example has actually small cut set. Maybe not two, but small cut set. Now let me keep going to the next example. That makes a lot big difference between the, the subdivision and the minor. That's a higher conjecture. Um, Which one do you know? I think you probably know this one. The, the, so it's it's one of the famous congestion graph called Hardwiger congestion, meaning that, well, maybe that this is better. So just look at the, this part. You fix a T, then given any graph, then either the graph should have T minus one curling or KT minus. And uh, the, the important thing is that if you put t equal 5, that's equivalent to the four color theorem. It's not immediate, but uh, uh, I, I think that I, I already did erased. But if you use this theorem, then actually 
you could prove that. And uh, it's true up to, uh, so, so Robert so Seymour and Thomas proved that the, the one more step, t equals 6 case, if you put t equals 6, then you get either 5 coroling or k6 final. And unfortunately, then the, all other cases open. And what's, what's known is that if you replace this t minus 1 by this, t square root of me, as I mentioned, then it's known. Now, after Hardwiger conjecture this important open problem, and it's still open right now, wide open, the highest 1960s conjecture that, well, it may be even true for not only the minor but also subdivision. And uh, I think that people actually believe that this conjecture. And the some sad thing is that, well, I should mention that if t is at most 4, that's the same as a minor case. It's known. But Catherine in 1980s, 1990s actually, gave a counter example. And that counter is going to be very easy to see it. So I'm going to, I want to give, I, I hope this is a counter example. You, you can check if I'm wrong. I'm going to give a counter example of t equals 7. I hope. Maybe wrong. So here is the graph. Now, first take a 5 cycle. Now keep in mind that this five cycle has at most two independent vertices. Okay, that's probably easy to see. Now, now I'm going to do the following operation called uh, inflation, meaning that replace each vertex by some clicks. In this case, I'm going to replace this guy by triangle, this guy by triangle. And this guy just by H, this guy by triangle, and this guy by H. And between these two guys, you stick all edges. For example, if you look at these two paths, you stick, you give all edges possible edges between these two vertices and three vertices. Okay. Now this graph has 13 vertices, right? 3, 3, 3, 2, 2. And uh, the independence, so what's the independence number of this graph? That's still 2. You see that? The point is, this is 5 cycle, and I'm replaced by this by, by click. So the independence number is still two. Okay. May I have to explain what the independence number means? The independence number means that the guys, the maximal set, the, the maximal independence set means a guy who are not uh, pairwise distribution, meaning that there are no edges between. For example, if I pick up these two guys, there are no edges, right? Now, this graph has 13 vertices, and uh, they, there are at most two independent vertices. Well, the, the maximum independent set is two. Now, this graph has chromatic number at least seven, because if you color these guys, they each color class. Suppose I cut out of this graph. They each color class, suppose, look at the color class, they say one. That, that consists of at most two vertices. Because if that consists of three vertices, then that gives you uh, independence set, right? So this graph is a chromatic number seven. Okay. So what you have to do is to find a case seven subdivision. Can you find it? I hope you don't. You can't. <laughs> so some, somehow it's somewhat strange that these two guys give you a case six already. So you need only one. 
looks like you could, but somehow point is these two guys actually blocks, right? You really need a disjoint path. For example, oh, this is, uh, you know, K6, so I need only my, let's take, pick up this guy, and this guy is just in this three. Oh, I only need three passes from here to there, but I wanted to get this guy cut off the, the passes. Well, we have to check a little bit more, but I hope that's... I hope you couldn't find the K7 <laughs> subdivision. So, the, the, I mean, the Kaplan's example is exactly something like this. He, he started with five cycle and they inflate each vertex. And you could actually, so this is only the seven case, but you could construct any case, case T, provided that those guys, T is bigger than or equal to seven. And this doesn't work for six and five. The only, the open, the only open question case is actually five and six, and looks like five case should be true. And that's really the big open question. It's called, it's gives, it says that either you get full coloring or K5 subdivision. That would be, a, I would say, the huge generalization of the full color server. Remember, if I, if I replace subdivision by minor, then that's easy. For, I mean, easy for t equal 5. But then if you replace subdivision, it's going to be hard. So this highest conjecture, everybody believed that, but the Catherine gave a nice example, just, just this. And everybody said, oh, gosh, that's, how come that we, couldn't make a, we couldn't find this one? <laughs> So I should mention that Cast and Thomas and one of the big graph theorists also gives a lot of counting samples. It is not this one, but quite a recent paper. I think that's maybe two years ago or three years ago. Okay, so now here I want to say something about this thing. This graph also contains small separation, right? Because that that gives the full separation. Right? That's uh, actually the real reason that you cannot find the uh, K7 subdivision. These two guys actually blocks. And remember in the, in the work of the ordering case, uh, I gave a hint that the, the, the simplest example has a two separation. And this guy has also the two four separation. So my motivation is actually, this is, Small separation has actually trouble. You get nothing if you get if you have a graph has a small separation. And uh, what I mean the small separation is that uh, remember if this if you want to find the subdivision of the T and you have some small separation which is let's say T over two. So that is a separation the T over two. And it looks like this doesn't help at all. What we what we like to do? You just want to focus on one side and the other side, right? But it looks looks like it doesn't help at all. So the minor case, you can shrink into the the separation. That's that's kind of the technique that we we have. But the subdivision case is horrible in the sense that, for example, suppose you have vertices here and everybody has at most two neighbor to this side, what you can do. You, you basically, this tells you that you cannot paste it. The only thing you can paste is maybe the two guys here and the, the you can maybe find a pass like this, a time like this, but that's it. You cannot find anything else, and this doesn't help because this side t over two, and once you can find uh, this kind of passes, this guy still have degree t over two. 
remember we want to have a, a subdivision of kt meaning that each vertex has degree t minus 1 right so it looks like for me that th th this small separation doesn't help at all and uh, you know that's cute our approach So what I think is that basically this probably you probably have to uh, assume that the separation is bigger than t or something. In t over two case, it doesn't help somehow. The one side uh, kills everything, and also the, you know uh, if this guy is degree two, then what you can do is just find the cycle or something, and then it doesn't help at all. So. Okay, let's skip how to here. Now, yeah, so the first, the, the first things that I just really want to say, which seems to have a small separation. Okay, now the difficulty is, as I said, that we don't really know the subdivision case, or the structure, whatever. But what I want is the last one. As I said, that uh, this small separation kills uh, almost everything, unfortunately. But, well, okay, that's not fair in a sense. And this is not helpful. So let's assume some connectivity. Let's assume something, connectivity. Let's assume there is no small separation. That is my observation. Okay. Then what I can do is the following. I'm assuming a bit bigger than t, unfortunately, not t. It would be nice if I only assume t, but I only assume, but a bit more, 2t minus 3. Then I can do the following. Either graph has a subdivision of kt, or the graph minus structure theorem. The, 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 I'm not going to tell you what it is, because that's, that's complicated, but that, just just remember that this is a nice structure. Just a nice structure. Well, it's not really easy to understand, but uh, useless. That, uh, it's not useless. It's somehow useful. So the theorem is, if you assume that this connectivity, then I can find either KT subdivision or nice structure. And uh, keep in mind that this, if you want to have only one conclusion, then you really need a t-square connectivity. So I've just relaxed to the linear, only 2t, then what I can get is, well, either one of them, one of the, the subdivision or oh, nice structure sum. Do I have only five minutes? I think, right? <laughs> so let me just summarize what I can do. Just just contrast between the minor and the topological minor. The minor case, the worst of CMOS graph minor decomposition theorem is nice. And it's very, very useful to prove many things like uh, uh Wagner's conjecture, like uh, if you have an infinite infinite graph, then one of them is minor with the other. And uh, the reason why they can do is that because of the robertson Simmons structure theorem. It's called structure theorem. And most of the graph minor papers are uh, uh, devoted to prove this. Nice one. And uh, if you assume some connectivity that linear, then you can always find the KT minor if graph is large enough. And if you want to exclude this large, then T square log T is enough. Now, have a subdivision case, and then no connectivity assumption. If you don't impose any connectivity assumption, then no structure is known. And I think even if it's actually uh, the Siemens condition is open, also this means even this conjecture gets solved. It doesn't give a. It only gives a nice clean structure, but doesn't give you a structure solved. 
unfortunately. And I think it's actually hopeless. You really need to prove something like four connectivity is enough. Four connectivity, then either you get the K T K five subdivision or something, 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 which means probably hard. Even the four K five subdivision is maybe hard. So what I do is just uh, impose some moderate connectivity condition. It's a linear connectivity condition. Then what I get is either KT subdivision or over some seamless graph magnetic. So that's the same. The finally, if you really want to have a subdivision, then you really need a quadratic. So that's kind of the stuff I'm doing. And, uh, So it's probably close to five, so I suppose to finish that. Thanks for your attention.